It's a beautiful, very, very humid day in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're going to wait a couple minutes, uh, let some folks get on here with us. What's cooking Wednesday? It is Wednesday. What day is it, Jen? Happy hump day. I think it's uh, 14th, 15th, 16th. I don't know. We're, uh, we're on COVID schedule, so it could be May. It could be August. It could be December. Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, but we're happy to be here. Today, got awesome, got some people joining. Today, we are doing caveman pork tenderloin. Now, it's important to remember there is a difference between pork loin and pork tenderloin. So pork loin, nice old big piece of pork on the back of the pork, pork tenderloin. On the inside, more tender, a lot smaller, they weigh about a pound. You can get them at the store, but they're right next to the loin, so make sure you're buying the right thing. Today, we're doing pork tenderloin. Tell you how we prep these. These were marinated for about the last six hours in teriyaki sauce. I like to buy a good teriyaki sauce. Don't buy the one that's like $1.50 at the store in the salad dressing section. The reason being, it's mostly like high fructose corn syrup and some other junk that's not real good teriyaki sauce. Spring for the one that's three, four dollars a bottle. This was Allegro teriyaki. Uh, I also took some mar or not marinated garlic. <laughs> I took some uh, minced garlic out of a jar, and or you can dice up your own, but minced garlic, garlic out of a jar. I rubbed those tenderloins down with it, and then I poured teriyaki sauce all over it and let it marinate for about the last six hours. Once that was all done, I poured the sauce off of it. I rinsed, actually rinsed all this off and towel dried it off, patted dried it off, uh, and then seasoned it heavily with kosher salt and black pepper. It's already got the garlic in it, so no need to add a lot more flavor. But the cool thing of what we're doing today is we are doing caveman style. So I'm going to take you with me. Hello. Caveman style on the Hasty Bake 132 Legacy. It's our stainless model. It's a wonderful model. I love it. It's my favorite model. Don't tell anybody. But we're going to throw these things directly on top of the fire. So we got the grill grate out, right? We got nothing going on there but the actual fire. I'm going to tilt this a little bit so you can hopefully see that fire a little bit better. And we are perfect. Thank you. That's good. We're going to throw these things directly on top of this fire. And the reason we do that is because pork tenderloin is one of those cuts that does really, really well over high, high, high heat. Uh, pork loin, not so much, but pork tenderloin is a very good cut to do high heat on. The reason being is because of the amount of fat content in it and the thinness of it. It's going to be a lot more tender when you go high heat. We can go ahead and put it down and prop me up here. It's going to be a lot more tender when you can go high heat on it than on a big old pork loin that really kind of benefits from a good roasting temp. So maybe 300, 325 on pork loin is kind of where you want to smoke it, you want to roast it. But on pork tenderloin, we really like doing these things over high heat. Turn a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on as we go. Now, for those of you who've just joined us and never seen us do caveman style before, caveman style is where you take lump charcoal, you can do it over briquette. I really prefer it over lump, you get a better smoke on it when you do it over lump. But you take lump charcoal, you get that thing lit, you get all of it lit. So you're not doing a small amount, you're not doing a smoking setup, you want that thing blazing hot. About as hot as you can get it. Sometimes what you can do is come on down there. I don't know if you saw that on video, but I just opened the door. I'm letting as much air into this thing as possible. I want it to flare up. I want it to get hot. I want to be cooking these things probably somewhere in the range of five to 600 degrees. And we lay those things directly on the coal. You can actually see some of that flaring up right now. That's a good thing. It's, uh, it's burning off some of that fat that's on the end of that. Now the key when you're doing caveman style is you want to kind of continually flip it about every 30 or 40 seconds you're going to give it a good flip maybe a minute at the most so you develop that good crust use your tongs to take off any big charred piece of charcoal that's hanging on but you kind of just want to keep rolling back and forth and you're going to keep continuing to build that crust up now what you can do i actually forgot to bring it with me today but that's the benefit of doing live uh, you can spray that thing down with cooking oil so duck fat or something like that is a wonderful thing. I think Jennifer's gonna go grab me some because it'll be that much better when we do it. Uh, but I like to continually kind of spray it down with cooking oil and what that does is it gives a nice kind of sheen on the surface for that heat to react to and give you that Maillard effect that you want. Now, anybody who's not done caveman style before is probably thinking, okay, that's really weird. You're gonna get charcoal all over. You're really not, it's not gonna be that bad. Uh, and if you do have charcoal on there, I promise you it'll sweat off. But we're taking our favorite duck fat today. 
flare up. That, that right there, that's pyrotechnics for TV. Yeah, baby. Probably not the safest thing. Better to do it when you pick it up and spray it, but do as I say, not as I do. And we're just gonna kinda continually do that. Now the key though, the key, the key, the key when you're cooking pork is having a very good thermometer. This is the Thermapen. It's my absolute favorite thermometer. It's an MK4, it's super accurate. The reason I like using the Thermapen when I'm doing something like Caveman, it is it's so unbelievably hot on that coal that if you use one of those thermometers that takes four or five seconds, you're gonna lose every bit of hair on your arm and you're probably gonna burn up your thermometer too. This Thermapen gives me my temperature about that quick. Let's me know what's going on with it. So I'm gonna continually turn this and keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Let you see what's going on. Got a nice char building on it. That's fine, that char is good. You got salt, pepper, you got that oil on there. This is gonna give us what we want. Now I'm gonna walk off screen here and grab something, show you what we're gonna to do to finish this off. I like having all my grates out when I'm doing caveman because it gives me full access to the fire. But what I like to do with these at the very end is drop a grate in because as soon as I get the bark that I want on these and they're three quarters, maybe half of the way cooked, I can go ahead and put them on the grate offset and let it roast at a high heat for the rest of the time. We have a question from Alan. Can you put on a, a rub or does it burn off? So the rub that I put on there is kosher salt and coarse ground black pepper. That's all I put on there. If you're joining us later, uh, we did marinate this in teriyaki sauce which is where you're gonna get some of that black char from because they're sugaring your teriyaki sauce and granulated or minced garlic. I can't say minced garlic for some reason today. I keep saying granulated garlic. But that, uh, that combination is really good when you don't wanna add a lot of extra sugar because there's already sugar in the teriyaki sauce. You don't wanna take away from your teriyaki by throwing on an extra barbecue rub. So I just did a heavy hand of coarse ground, uh, coarse ground black pepper and kosher salt. Pulling these off to temp them. Save my hand a little bit better. And what temperature are you going for? I wish I could tell you. I get, the lid's open right now, so I'll just say it's hot as I'll get out. Probably 500 degrees or more on that. I like the bark I'm getting. You can kind of see where we're going with that. I'm going to take these on the grate, and I'm going to put them directly over the fire. And I'm going to continue to let that bake for just a little while longer. Now when you're doing pork, you gotta make sure you're hitting the temperature you wanna be hitting, which for pork, that safe temperature is about 145. And I'm actually getting close to there on the small parts of this. The bigger parts aren't quite where we want them to be. So I mean, I'm gonna let this bake a little bit. And the way I do that, you can leave the lid, or the door open if you want, but I'm just gonna close that lid, hold some of that heat in, and those things will continue to bake. They're getting real close. It's a very quick cook. It's about a 10, 12, maybe a 15 minute cook, depending on the thickness of your pork loin. You always try to get it as uniform as possible. So when you're at the store and you want to pick a pork loin out or a pork tenderloin rather, important difference like I said before, uh, you want to try to pick the one that's as uniform as possible because if not, you end up doing the problem I got right here where you got this little tiny bit and you got a big thick piece on that side. That little tiny bit right now is almost done and that thick piece is not quite ready yet. So we are gonna go ahead and let it bake. If it was all uniform, you probably could leave it on the coals the entire time and just continually turn it around and it will bake great. But right now, we kind of have to do this on the other side. Tim, you're hungry. Pass them through the, are you, are you here, Tim? Where are you at? Go long, I'll throw it over for you. Any other questions? Awesome. But we are open. We are open for anybody who's got questions or about us being here. We are here, it's wonderful. We're at the grill store, people are walking in. It's real, we're alive again. Uh, we are doing all the social distancing practices we need to be doing, so we're wearing masks when we're inside. Jennifer, say hi on your mask. We're wearing masks when we're inside, we're cleaning down all the services, we're trying to keep apart from each other, being as safe as we possibly can, but 
Uh, we are open for business, so come on in, put a mask on, and hang out with us, and, uh, and we'll, be, we'll be happy together. We're almost happy because I bet these are getting close to done. Getting there a little bit more. Do a little turn on them. I'm getting some wonderful color. Again, pork temperature, you're shooting for 145. So if you go over 145, it used to be 160. So the federal guidelines that we have for, for temperature, I don't know who sets those guidelines. I'm not sure. Someone important, some scientist somewhere sets those guidelines. And they used to say 160 was where it needed to be, which meant that you got a really safe piece of pork that tasted like trash. But now you got a nice juicy set of pork. 145 is a good medium temperature for that pork. I'm gonna bake this just a little bit more. That's the beauty of being able to have your charcoal burning because we got the door open and have the hood on the top. So you're catching all that smoke, you're baking all that stuff in here, but at the same time, you can keep charcoal going. On any other cooker, once you close up that cooker, everything starts dropping on the temperature because you're depriving it of oxygen. But on our model with a full width fire door, you can keep that air flowing, keep that charcoal hot even while you're baking. So right now on the front of this thing, it's still rising. I bet you it's going to get to 500 degrees right now. Now, can you inject them? You absolutely can inject them. A uh, couple things. When you're cooking something this hot, when you inject, it's just going to go right back out. Uh, all that liquid is going to boil up and it's going to come back out. So if you want to inject, it's better to kind of cook them slow, cook them in the 275 to 300 range. Let that meat kind of come up to temperature more slowly and absorb some of that liquid. Now, I've never found the need to inject a pork tenderloin before. They're normally juicy enough. They're wonderful. Pork loin, I tend to inject a little bit more, although that's even hard because pork loin is so dense because there's not a lot of intermuscular fat uh, that sometimes that stuff just wants to come shooting right back out at you too. So, but yes, you can inject. What we opted to do instead of inject is do that marinade. Uh, I think that's going to give us the results we want. Keep checking the temperature. You don't want to ruin this part. This is the important part. We're about 110, 120 on some of these. I just keep rotating them, build up that bark. Now that black stuff that you're seeing on there, we have to remind people who don't cook barbecue a lot, that black stuff you're seeing on there is actually bark. It's not burned. Uh, this stuff was marinated, like I said, in teriyaki sauce. When it's marinated in teriyaki sauce, it's got all that sugar in there. So it wants to kind of burn up on the sugar a little bit, but you are building a continual bark. We're going to hit that. I'm going to show you the safe way to do this. Like I said, do as I say, not as I do. You pull it up with your tongs and you do that, kind of keep it away from the fire. Spraying aerosol cans of stuff that's flammable over fire is probably not advisable. Let it keep going. Other questions? Hi, Kevin Snell. How you doing, buddy? Kevin could probably come over here and cook circles around me on something like this. Kevin, we're doing pork tenderloin. It's looking pretty, but you could make it better. Hi, Steven. How you doing, bud? What else we got here? Oop. We're literally rolling smoke. We're rolling smoke. Hi, Trent. It's a good afternoon. I don't. It's only Wednesday, right? Again, it. it feels like December 31st something, but uh, we're halfway through the week. It's a good time to, to sit down and cook some stuff. So here's a good reminder for you guys too. Uh, traditionally this time of year, starting around April or so, uh, we host 101 classes here about every other week in the store on Saturdays. We can't really do that right now. So they're not letting anybody more than about 10 people gather uh, here in Tulsa. So uh, we have some good alternatives for you. Last year, we sat down, spent the time to film a 101 class online. We, we produced it, we filmed it, we did all the stuff that we want you to learn 101 as far as learning about your hasty bake, learning about lighting your fire, maintaining, and all that good stuff. And we went ahead and put that up on our YouTube page. Thanks, Charles. It is looking good, bud. Uh, we put that up on our YouTube page. And uh, it's got, I mean, quite a bit of attention. It's one of our more popular videos. Uh, mainly because we have a lot of people from around the country and around the world that really want to learn how to use their grills better, so they watch that 101 video. So in lieu of being able to host those classes here at the grill store, we went ahead and put that up on YouTube. We will eventually resume those classes as soon as we can, uh, but for right now, 
we ended up having to do this thing online. So go ahead and check it out on YouTube. And also a really good resource on YouTube is our Fire Management 101 video. So that's a little bit longer video. It's a 30 minute video, but we've broken it up into three to five minute chunks based on the topic. So you can watch the whole video on one or just click on the topic you want, but it teaches you everything you want to know about doing a hot and fast, a caveman, a long burn, lighting your fire, putting your fire out, how much charcoal to use, every question you could possibly have on a hasty bake is answered in that video and that's right there on our YouTube page as well. So there's tons of good stuff on that YouTube page. Definitely check it out, good recipes. We post all our What's Cooking Wednesday videos on them. We post all our Facebook Lives on them. We just wanna, uh, we try to get in front of you guys as much as we can, inspire you to get out there and cook on your grills. Uh, so yeah, uh, Alan Hood, in answer to your question, how long did we marinate it in teriyaki? About six hours. Now you can buy the pre-marinated ones. I don't normally like them as much, but you can buy them if you'd like. You can even buy them and then marinate on top of that. So. We tried to give you guys a little bit of a heads up that we're doing this video today. Uh, sometimes we try to get you a couple hours ahead of time. Sometimes we don't succeed in that. I think I give you about 15 minute notice. But you can count almost every Wednesday, we try to put one of these videos out. So around midday or so on Wednesday, we try to put them out. Give a temp here, we are there, almost there. I'm gonna go ahead. We'll give this about another two or three minutes and these things are gonna be done. I got about 134 on the small one. I got about 130 on the big one. So a couple more minutes, we're kind of getting, getting where we want to be. I'll let you look at them again. It's meat porn. It's, it's really cool stuff. This is where we get some content for our YouTube page and everything else. They're very pretty. We like them. So Nick, what model is that? So again, we are cooking on the Hasty Bake 132 Legacy today. It's our real pretty stainless model. I love the stainless model. I love our black model too here, so I'll show you. We got a 131 powder coat. That's our most popular model, the 131. It's been around forever. It's a wonderful unit, but the 132 is the upgrade to that 131. It's a stainless model, and I'll tell you why it's an upgrade. Because not only is the outside fully stainless, but all the components on the inside are stainless too. Inside the black powder coat, the 131, a lot of those components are galvanil. They'll last a long, long, long time if you take care of them. But if you don't take care of them, galvanil, like any other thing, can tend to rust. So you gotta keep them clean, you gotta keep them brushed out. But that is our, our most popular grill is the 131. When you upgrade to the 132, and you bump yourself up to that stainless, you get full stainless inside. It's not gonna rust out on you on the inside. It's not gonna rust out on you on the outside. If you're like me and you can't take care of your grills, this is a really good option because I don't have a lot of time to be hosing and pressure washing and scraping grills out several times a year. And I run a lot of grills. I got 14 grills up at the property we use for our barbecue school. So I got to have as easy a maintenance as possible. This sits on my back porch uncovered. Don't tell anybody, but you can do that with a stainless. You can't do that with a 131. So figure out which one you like. Figure out if you know yourself, are you going to cover it? Are you going to clean it? That 131 is a great option. If you're lazy like I am and you got too much, too many irons in the fire, stainless is the way to go. Hi Cameron. Hey Kyle, what's going on guys? We are just about done on this tenderloin. I'm gonna give it one more roll. That bark is about as good as bark is gonna look. Okay. So one of these is coming off right now. Sizzle. The other one I'm gonna temp one more time. It might need another minute, and that's fine. Oh, you know, I'm gonna call that one good too, because that's gonna rest. Sizzle. Go on the board, shutting this thing down. Now remember, you are cooking over charcoal, so shut the lid, shut the door. If you leave that stuff open, you run the risk of a grease fire if you're not paying attention. All right, we got these on the board. Now, you will always turn, there you go. You will always he hear me harp on this. You want to rest your meat. Turning this up, gonna angle it down a little bit so you can see these. You gotta rest your meat, guys. Uh, when you rest your meat, all those juices that go running away from the heat on these things, they tend to go to the outside when it's really, really hot. And you cut into it, you're gonna spill all your juice juices out on the cutting board, but the inside's gonna be a little dry. So we're gonna go ahead and let these things rest out here. You really only need to rest something this thin for about two or three minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and let it rest for that two or three minutes that it needs, uh, and then go ahead and cut into it. The bigger the cut, the longer the rest you want. When I'm cooking something like briskets, 
or figure out what knob I need to do to turn. Hi, I'm here. Uh, when I'm cooking something like briskets or pork butts or something like that, I go ahead and rest that meat for sometimes upwards of two or three hours. Uh, wrap it up in a towel. Uh, it's already wrapped in foil or butcher paper. Wrap it up in a towel, uh, throw it in a cooler, and let that thing redistribute, get super, super juicy. Hey, Sam Walker. Hey, Joe. Hey, Sam, thank you so much for making our audio awesome. Sam brought us a microphone set to use for Facebook Live, and I think our audio is getting a lot better out here, so I'm very thankful for Sam for uh, helping us out, and uh, he's a great cameraman, work, works for a company I used to work for. I uh, love that guy. So hello from South Texas. Ray, what's going on? Patrick Sampson, good to see you, buddy. We are about a minute away from slicing into this caveman pork butt, so I'm just going to real quick go over. Dude, Angelina, what's going on, bud? Uh, real quick, I'm going to go over what we did. So we got some pork tenderloin, not pork loin, pork tenderloin from the store. We marinated it in uh, teriyaki sauce and not granulated garlic, but minced garlic for about six hours in a pan in the refrigerator. Let that stuff get good and soaked up. Then we uh, went ahead and rinsed it off. So we pulled it out of the pan, emptied the pan out, rinsed all that stuff off because what we wanted to get in the meat was already in the meat. We did a heavy coat of black pepper and kosher salt. We normally would put garlic with that, but we already put uh, that minced garlic in it in the marinade, so we didn't need to over garlic it. We did black pepper and kosher salt, which is a really good complement to teriyaki. And we let that stuff sit for about 20 minutes, kind of start to you know m melt into the meat, get all good and gooey and perfect like we want it. We made a caveman style fire over our charcoal grill. Now you can do this on a cast iron skillet. You can do it on a gas grill if you want. We're obviously cooking on our hasty base because that's what we love. But we did a caveman style directly on top of the coals and we rolled it around about every 30 or 40 seconds. We flipped it and just kind of kept going and going and going. Because these were thicker, we went ahead and let them come up to temperature by putting a grate back of inside our grill and we kind of roasted it for the last little bit. And now we've been resting it. Sam's got a cool mask. Greg's asking, Sam has a, uh, he's got a Tulsa flag mask. Oh, wow. I wish I could figure out, uh, Mythic or someone probably made them. Wish I could figure out when you got one of those because those are really cool. But all right, we are, I'm going to call this rest good. If I was doing this at home, guys, I would probably rest it for another couple minutes. But because we're doing it here, I want to show it to you on camera. These look good, 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 good. All right, so. The grain of tenderloin, like any other tenderloin, is going to run like this, so we want to cut against the grain, so I come right down the middle. I want to show you how juicy that is. That's absolutely wonderful. I like to slice these things into medallions. Just like that. Now, if I was someone fancy like Emeril Lagasse or something like that, I'd be kind of drizzling some barbecue sauce over that. Uh, you can absolutely drizzle barbecue sauce. Uh, put some dipping stuff. You can kind of make a board sauce if you like. Show you these things. They want to come apart. They're nice and tender. Thanks, oh, that's guys. good. <laughs> Jennifer? Yes, thank you. That's hot. Guys, this is really good. You saw how quick I did. The marinade takes longer than anything else. I'll come back over here. Turn this up so you can see me. Got food in my mouth. Marinade takes longer than anything else. With that grill, it took about 10 or 15 minutes to do. And that's a wonderful tenderloin. Got some good teriyaki flavor in it. Not overpowering. That bark is really good. It's got a nice crunch to it. Grab one of these from your store, from your local store, from your local farm, wherever you get your pork. And run it caveman style on your hasty bake. Any other questions today? Hey, Wichita, Kansas. What's going on, Diane? EMG Graphics. That's where you get those Tulsa flag masks. I'm going to Google that as soon as I'm done. Uh, Alan, guys, thank you so much for joining us today for What's Cooking Wednesday. I appreciate you being part of it. If you guys got suggestions, you want to see us cook something, you want to see a certain style cooked, definitely send us a message on Facebook or on YouTube, leave a comment, and we'll try to get it, get it on the list for to cook all that stuff for you guys. If you're watching this on YouTube later, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, follow us the best you can. That's the way you're going to get notifications for all these things. Make sure you're following us on Facebook. You can actually drop that little arrow down and hit show first and you'll get all the updates when we send these things out from Hasty Bake. But thank you for joining us. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. And uh, wish you were here because this is really good. All right. Have a great Wednesday, guys. We'll see you soon.